Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Runcam 2 4K edition. This camera comes in around $99. It weighs just about 49 grams. It's 38 millimeters wide, about 56 millimeters long, and we include the lens at 67 and a half millimeters long. And lastly, it's 21 millimeters tall. Micro USB port on the back to access the recordings as well as charge the battery that's inside. Here on the top, we have the power button, the Wi-Fi button, and the LED light giving us our status. It also comes with this USB wiring harness so you could wire it up to something else, like a flight controller or just another power source. Of course, it comes with a flat USB cable. It comes with this clip-in mounting bracket as well as this clip-in mounting adapter for a tripod or something like that, and an extra lens protector. Also available separately is this dual battery charging unit, which uses USB-C as well as micro USB. And here are the power ratings on the back. In this video, I'm going to show the footage by putting the Runcam 2 4K on the baby crocodile, just like that. So we used to use these sort of cameras in quadcopters a, a number of years ago, and some of you may still be using them. It really depends upon your platform and what works best with your, your quad. I can also see this being used for fixed wing. I've even seen some people hinting to using this as their primary FPV camera. I would think, but I have not experienced, there would be significant delay. So something to note. In this particular case, we're looking at a flight around my neighborhood. Unfortunately, it is fairly windy. Uh, it gets more windy this time of year. You know, the trees don't have their leaves on them anymore, so they can't knock down that wind from a forest as much. Uh, but we... It's a relatively calm day in terms of what we've had most recently. Typically, our winds are above 10 miles an hour. I think this one is right around 10, maybe 11 miles an hour. But it's not uncommon for us to have high teens, low 20s, and even high wind warning days of 30 and 40 mile an hour winds. So this time of year can be rough for getting a nice calm day. But I wanted to fly around there a little bit. I think what I see this mostly used for, well, at least in my experience, is people that do uh, YouTube or airsoft recordings. I'm sure there's a host of other reasons we could use them. But when it comes to me and when I see people using this camera, it's oftentimes airsoft. Yes, I, I do watch airsoft from time to time. I find it good fun. Uh, the Dutch hooligan Alfonso or uh, Alfonso, Air Alfonso, I forget his name. Kicking Mustang, um, their house gamers or something like that. Uh, there, there's uh, uh, Norwich. Another one, uh, Airsoft. So I do watch those from time to time. They pop up on that side stream for uh, YouTube, and I do find their content fairly interesting. I used to play war when I was a kid, and I don't want to downplay what they're doing. I'm sure it's good fun. It's a good hobby, just like the, the hobby that I enjoy of flying quadcopters. So that's where I see this used the most. I am very curious about any of you that might have a camera, whether it be this camera or something similar in the same format, what you use the camera for. I think there's a host of possible reasons. I don't want to pigeonhole this particular camera into just being for airsoft, but uh, I'm very curious about what other people might use this sort of camera for, or the ideas you might have for a reason why you might want a camera in this format. For those that do fly quads and you want to hear a little bit, I'm going to turn the audio on. While the audio is off, I'll put audio off on the screen so when you see that go away. If you want to mute for the sound, I'll reduce the volume to make it tolerable, but if you're sensitive to it or something of that nature, you just don't want to hear it, you'll know that uh, you'll want your mute or your volume turned way down when you see the words audio on on the screen. At the end of this flight, I will also talk to the camera. Uh, again, it is mounted on the Crocodile Baby from GetBarC. Uh, if you are interested in that quadcopter for whatever reason, I'll put a link down in the video description. You can watch that review. Uh, but here at the end of the flight, I will go ahead and I'll talk to the camera a little bit, and then I'll turn it around and talk to it as well. And then I'll leave that audio volume, as long as it's not really irritating, uh, at its normal volume levels. I won't edit that volume level down when I'm just talking to it. So you might be able to hear some of the ambient noises in the uh, the area as I talk to the camera. Uh, that could be useful depending upon your application for this sort of camera. little audio test, really bad lighting with the brightness out there behind me, but you get the idea. Let me turn around this way, maybe that's a little better. little face sample, not just flight sample. And if you have this mounted to an airsoft rifle or something else, you might need to turn the camera around and face the other direction, so let's listen to the audio when I'm behind it. Of course, this is still mounted to the quad, so if the microphone is on the bottom of the camera, it would have a direct impact on the audio. All right, that's all for this bit. 
It might be worth noting uh, that Runcam does offer a $5 coupon if you join their Facebook group. I don't know how you go about getting the $5 coupon or if it's some automated process or if you have to request it after joining the group. So if you're looking to buy this camera directly from Runcam, uh, you might want to look at that as an option to save yourself a free $5. Because I didn't show it in the quick roll, something that may be important to you, SD card goes right here. Of course, our USB port is exposed through our, our door there, and it has this little tab to where you can get a hold of the tab to pull the battery in and out. Maybe I'm not doing it so well here on camera. There we go. Uh, extra batteries looks like they run about $13, and this little charger runs about $14 or $13.99. I do find this door really can be difficult the first few times to get it unlocked, uh, which can be a good thing, but it starts to loosen up after a few times of getting it in and out. Uh, let's take a look at the Wi-Fi app if you're not familiar with that. First thing we want to do, of course, is we want to turn it on. So we long press. Give it a few moments here to make sure it's all the way turned on. And then we're going to press the Wi-Fi button. Of course, there's an app in the App Store depending on which phone you use, the Play Store or the App Store, and you need to download that on your phone. Now we've got the flashing light. We need to connect to Wi-Fi. I am going to keep that private. You don't need to look at all the stuff on my phone. Pretty heavy glare here, but you can see I've got the camera actually right over here behind. And let's, let's just wiggle this a little bit. See that delay I was talking about? It's not bad. But for flat, fast-flying quads, you certainly want to use it. You can see, hopefully, it comes through clearly in the video recording, all the different options that we have here. The main thing I used this for, and everybody's going to have a different application for it, is to make sure I had set the recording up like I wanted to, and then to hit the record button, because I wanted to make sure it was recording, or I would load up the app to make sure it records. Now, if you don't connect to it in a certain period of time, you will find that the Wi-Fi button goes off, or the LED light goes off. So if you're having any troubles, and you find you can't connect to it, make sure that LED button is flashing. Not the button, I'm sorry. The LED in front of the Wi-Fi button is flashing. That indicates Wi-Fi is on and ready for you to connect. And when you've connected to it, it's solid, as you can see here. Then if we hit record, we get a little beep out of the Run Cam 2. And you can see that we're recording. You can see I've got doodads. We've got some quads over here. And we've got some quads over here. You guys remember that? A couple of models built by Mr. Goody, Mr. Wiggles FPV. Some of the little 1S batteries I use over here. Little tour of the desk area. It's quite a mess off screen. Uh, some of you might find that interesting or funny. And then when we stop, we get another couple of beats to confirm that. Uh, I didn't scroll through all the different settings, so let me do that so that you can see these things. The ones that were off screen, I believe, are sharpness, uh, white balance. You can flip the screen upside down, field of view. If we tap that, we see we've got wide, medium. Oh, I should have waited there. And then narrow. It just kind of zooms each step in. Of course, I want wide. Uh, and then the metering mode is average, center weighted, spot metering. I, in my recording, I used average metering. Uh, metering. Uh, oh, ISO. That might be something that some of you want to see. You can see across the top, hopefully, the different ISOs. ISO 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. If you want to get into the recording settings, we just tap there. And then you can see we scroll through. I recorded it in uh, 60 frames per second because that's what I wanted. If you go all the way up to 3840 by 2160, you can see we only have 30 frames a second per second available to us. Uh, 50 frames a second there. That's the only two options there. 1920 by 1080, 120 frames a second and 60 frames per second. And that's as low as it goes. So those are your three recording options. Uh, this is the one that I chose in my recording because I wanted that silky smooth 60 frames per second. That's really it for the camera and the app. Of course, there are different things within here that you might want to take a look at. I'll scroll through this just a little bit. Firmware version, that might be important to you if you're watching this down the line and you're wondering. 1.2.1. That's really it for the app. Of course, when we're all done, we turn the run cam to 4K off. There we go. And you can actually hear that little noise inside, kind of powering down, a little crackling noise. 
um, that's something that might be of interest to you as well. So again, I'm very curious what others might be using this platform with. I think there's also an opportunity right here. Isn't this made for one of those loops that you might use on a keychain key or to lock it down so if it gets loose from uh, say your clamp here that you could then run a small string through there and then maybe attach it to the side rail or some other part of whatever this is mounting to so if the camera does come dislodged it won't like fall on the ground and get completely lodged you have that secondary opportunity for it to catch on whatever you have this mounted for so that's something else I should have brought out in the video which I'm just now covering but let me know down in the comment section what you would use this for, what you do use this sort of format for. I'm interested in knowing. And if you have any other comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.